Hey everybody, this is Luke. We're going to take a break from poker videos and try to see if we can go down in mathematical infamy by proving the collapse conjecture false. This is the uh, well-known 3x plus 1 problem. And if you haven't heard of it, it's super cool because um, I'll show you what it is. It's basically a challenge that says, can you find a number such that if you, if it's even, you divide by two. If it's odd, you multiply by three and add one. And then you'd keep doing that. And can you find a number such that that number doesn't become one eventually? And nobody's ever done it. They've tested by brute force the first, like, sextillion I think it's sextillion um, numbers but they haven't gone higher because it's too many numbers like computers aren't that powerful to test that many numbers but they haven't proven it mathematically that um, that any number up to infinity will always go back down to one and so I think that possibly we can get lucky and find a counterexample and prove it false and if we do we're going to become famous so i thought this is kind of like buying a lottery ticket but like in our case we don't even have to pay we just have to code it up so i'll show you how i did it and let me just show you like more formally the actual process so like pick a number right 12 let's do let's do one that's simple pick a number four if it's even divided by two that's now two if it's odd, but it wasn't odd, so then we go back to step, back to step two. All right. Now the number is two. If it's even divided by two, now it's one, and we're done, um, because we got down to one. So starting with the number four, the number of times, and I'll show this in Excel. The number of steps that it takes is like three steps. You start with four, you go two, one. Um, so it's kind of cool too because some numbers like five takes six steps six takes nine steps um, but like the number 27 takes like 112 steps and it goes all the way up to like 9,000 before it starts working it way, its way down and uh it's really a cool problem because they say that math is not mature enough to answer such questions whether it always goes to one or not and so some people have dedicated their lives to proving that it does always go down to one uh, but if we found just one counterexample, like some number uh, up higher than uh, some sextillion then uh, we would prove the theory false and we would become famous and I'd like to become famous. So what I started to do was um, test numbers like uh, in a, like you know really high numbers like this. And uh, Excel was able to figure out that it took 145 steps. So I just started to be like, what if Excel? How high can Excel go? It can it can solve like really high numbers. And I thought, man, I'm really pleasantly surprised with like how good Excel can do at like figuring out how many steps it takes to go down um and but then what i realized was excel is rounding the number to the nearest like i don't know quintillion or something notice that all the zeros that it does and i looked this up and um sure enough uh Anytime I type in something that big, it just strips it of all the extra numbers. But what I wanted to do was count, was try a few sequentially. So my plan is, let's start somewhere in the octillions, right? Like, what's 555 octillion? Let's do it. 555. Five, five. This is the thousands, millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions, quintillions, sextillion, septillion, octillion. Um, so that's 555 octillion and I wanted to just start with that one and add one to it but Excel can't handle I googled this Excel can't handle numbers that big it will refuse to do math on numbers that are that big so I 
decided to go to Python and set it up in Python. So we're starting with 555 octillion, and we're just going to keep on adding one and, and just keep on trying. So we did it in Python. Where are we? So right now it's running. And don't tell anyone that I started with this seed because, you know, someone's going to go faster than me. Basically, I just think the probability is basically zero that somebody is trying by brute force something right here in the octillions like this because it's too much. It's too high a number. They can't keep computing all that stuff. But if we get lucky and we find the counterexample, we're going to be famous. So um, <clears throat> this here is just testing. Here's the Python program. Basically what it's doing is it's running the algorithm. But if, um, if it gets down to one, it just adds an increment and then tries again. And it's only going to ever stop if we find that there's a number that takes more than 3,000 iterations to get down to one. And maybe it takes um, 3,005 iterations to get down to one, but I've got no other way of, like, you know, stopping. Because, like, if it takes forever and the number blows up to infinity, um, then the computer won't be able to tell me that that's happening. But, like, all these huge octillion numbers tend to take, like, five or 800 iterations to get down to one. I did a few sanity checks on that. So I decided to stop it if it ever takes 3,000 or more iterations. So far, we've tested 3 million numbers in the octillions. And this is only in the last 10, 20 minutes. So it's pretty impressive because every one of these, boom, 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 that's testing a thousand different numbers in the octillion. So the computer is quite fast at doing this. I'm pretty impressed with Python being able to, number one, work with such high numbers. Number two, uh, be able to calculate them so quick. So yeah, we're just going to let this baby run. I'll update you guys sometime if we ever find a seed number that takes more than 3,000 iterations to um, to converge. And if it so happens that the number takes more than 3,000 iterations to converge, I was also um, looking, I was listening to YouTube videos on this. Veritasium actually is the one that got me onto this. And um, it said that it's already been mathematically proven that if it goes down, if it cycles, it can either it can either cycle and just keep looping. Like let's say we start at eight octillion and it goes up to nine octillion and twenty octillion, and then um, and bounces around. It can either loop back to that same octillion seed and keep looping, or it can just go up to infinity, one or the other. But they say if it's looping, the loop is going to be more than uh, a few billion characters long. So if we find one that's more than 3,000, we're hoping that it is one of those ones that loops with a few billion uh, different numbers and then returns back to its number. So we've got work to do. If we find one that takes more than 3,000 to converge, there will be more work to do to prove the Collatz conjecture wrong. But if we can prove it wrong, you saw it here first, uh, how we set out to prove it wrong. And uh, yeah, see, nobody's testing this range of numbers in the octillions because it's too high. It's kind of like we found a secret area of integers to test and um you never know maybe we can prove it wrong and we will become famous so i'll update you guys later if uh if we get there okay bye